What's up guys, today we're going to be looking at building an Azure backend but for a throwaway app. So the app in question is called Bait News, it's a sample app I wrote about a year ago. It was written really, really quickly, there, there isn't a huge amount to this app. Um, it's just for iOS to start with, so it's a tr traditional style Xamarin development, a one-to-one -one mapping to every single API. I'm using storyboards for my UI. So there's no Xamarin forms anywhere to be found within this project. It has an Azure App Service backend. Version 1 is already in the App Store, so if you search for Bait News in the iOS App Store, you will find my app. It has an easy table backend today. Version 2 already has an ASP.NET backend built and deployed. I just haven't shipped version 2 to the App Store yet. But I wanted to talk about how I built version 1 because the backend actually only took about 10 minutes to get built. And I'm going to walk you through the process of how I did that. Um, because I'm using App Service, naturally I have offline data. This was a key requirement for me with the, with the app. I didn't want to have to constantly do round trips to a backend to get new data. I wanted to store it on the device so that if they're on a train, maybe going under the sea to go to France or something on a Eurostar, they could still use the application even though they would have no connectivity to the internet. Last but not least, version 1 doesn't have any user content, so I didn't really have to worry about authentication. So this really is an MVP, a minimum viable product. If you need authentication, you can absolutely do that with easy tables. It's just not the easiest of thing, especially for a C-sharp developer. I'd much rather just do file new solution and build the, the backend using ASP.NET uh, and the app service SDKs. So if we think about Azure as pizza as a service, there's a couple of different options available to us. So we have the homemade approach, which is the equivalent to on-premise. This is where you're going to control everything. In the, in the context of pizza, you may go out and buy a cow, you may milk it. Pretty extreme, right? Then turn that into cheese. So you're going to wait a year, maybe more. It depends what kind of cheese you're making. It's a lengthy process. It's not very efficient. And what I find with on-premise is you, you scale up, right? You'll go and buy new hardware because you've, you know, you've employed a thousand more people on the payroll system at the end of the month. Just can't take the, the workload. There's too many people requesting uh, data off it. It's being overloaded. So you go out and you buy a new piece of hardware and at the weekend you migrate over to it and you know, you're doing great from now on. But there's you know, perhaps 28 days of the month that that box, that huge server is sat there doing nothing just for a spike at the end of the month for the payroll. It's not very efficient, is it? And you're never going to scale down because nobody ever does. No one ever goes in on a weekend to say, hey, Jeff, this is running great on this uh, this beast of a server, why don't we try running it on uh, Dave's desktop instead to, to save up some resources? Never happens. You only seem to scale up um, when dealing with on-premise. You never scale back down. So, you know, not a great approach, but you've probably got some on-premise data. It's worth knowing with Azure you can just connect into it, but this isn't a sales pitch. Anyway, cooperative, that's infrastructure as a service. Everyone does it. It's a race to the bottom in terms of pricing, so shop around, you will find some really good deals. If you get in touch with people from the company, such as Google, Amazon, or Microsoft, they will definitely cut you a deal because they want their commission. Remember that. Platform as a service, this is where the services can start to differentiate because different uh, providers or hosting providers have different offerings within their platform as a service. I'm intimately familiar with the Microsoft platform as a service offerings and I really quite like them and that's not bias me working for Microsoft, that's a, an honest opinion. I think that the ASP.NET uh, SDKs around mobile uh, with an app service uh, NuGet packages, they're pretty nice. I quite like it. I can build a backend very, very quickly. The thing I like about platform as a service is all I have to worry about is my data and my app. That's it. So I can really focus on the problem and the domain rather than trying to build, you know, different uh, networking, uh, infrastructure, uh, storage, worrying about OSs and updating them, virtual machines. All of that's taken care of for me. Uh, but what that does mean is that, that I have no control over when things like the OS are patched. Um, so if you do want the control, you probably want infrastructure as a service or on-prem. If you're happy to give up some of that control uh, for the ability to scale and to not have to manage it, then platform as a service is great. 
Lastly is software as a service. This is things like cognitive services or notification hub. It's just a REST API that you're calling up to uh, and it's doing all the hard work for you. You don't really need to deal with any scaling sets or anything like that. You just send requests up to it and if it needs to scale up or out, it's gonna deal with it for you. So we're gonna be focused mostly on platform as a service. As I say, this is app service. This is where I do the most or majority of my work um, because it's so, so quick to get started with. And there are numerous options within app service for all developers. So Bank News version one of the back end, as I say, is built with easy tables. Now, when I was designing the back end, I had a couple of options available to me. I could have just gone with a really crappy architecture, which, and you will find this architecture outlined in even Xamarin documentation about this is best practice for connecting up to uh, data. I don't think they actually say it's best practice, but given it's in the documentation, I, I would assume, if I didn't know better, that it's best practice, but it really isn't. This is the worst practice. You never want to do this. You're giving every single device that has your app installed the database key. They can get full access to all of the data. Really, really bad practice. Even for a proof of concept, you should not be doing this. What we can do to improve this is to add middleware. So this app service that sits between our SQL database and the client. And this means that we can move that database key off device and into the cloud. And we put it in app service. So we have this orchestrator, uh, which is our app service, which can deal with calling off to all the different services within Azure or third parties that we're using. But it allows us to authenticate that the people that are interacting with this service, we actually want to be able to interact with it. We're not just leaving the front door open for everyone or giving everyone the keys to the house not ideal. So let's have a look at how we actually created that. Here we are within the Azure portal. You can see I've already got a number of resource groups created, but I want to go ahead and create a brand new resource group. You can think of resource groups as folders for all of our resources. In this case, I'm going to have a SQL database and I'm going to have that orchestrator layer, the middleware, as an app service. Now I've got a couple of options in terms of location where I can host this. I'm going to choose this closest location to me which is UK South and uh, that's just outside London so it's going to reduce the latency and make my app seem a little bit faster. So it's created the resource group let's go ahead and refresh and have a look at what we've got. Nothing that's to be expected. Uh, we've not added any resources to the resources group so let's hit plus and go searching. We're going to want mobile app and it's already on the first page here so we can just click through we're going to want to set a unique name. In this case, it's going to be my sample backend. Um, you may want to change the names depending on location. It could be my sample backend UK. Uh, we have a couple of other options to create new resource groups or use existing and then app service plans. In this case, I'm going to create a brand new app service plan for this sample because I'm going to delete this pretty much as soon as we're done. And again, I'm going to select UK uh, South. There we go. Um, and I'm going to select the pricing tier to be free because I don't want to pay any money for this. It really is just a throwaway sample. And we'll create that. And it's pretty quick to create uh, these new uh, mobile apps. So we'll just give it a moment and then we should have that deployed and ready for us to use. Great stuff. So that's now deployed. Just what I want to see. So we can actually go ahead and use this now. So let's pop back to the resources. And we're going to have to hit refresh when we get back here in order to see our new items. And there we go, we have the app service plan and our app service. So let's click on the app service. And the first thing we want to do is set up our data connections. Now I could search for it in the top, but I'm just going to scroll down this list and find it. There's quite a few options, but it's pretty easy to find. You'll find it under mobile. Boom, there we go. We click on... Uh, data connections. We have no data connection, so we need to create a new one. We have the option of SQL database or storage. We want SQL in this case, so we'll create a new SQL database in order to store our data. Now, this is the interesting thing. We're using easy tables, so this is a Node.js uh, backend effectively. We've not written any Node.js, but the data is still stored within SQL data. So we can still scale to meet any demands that we, we have in terms of uh, the data throughput. So we're not limited by easy tables. Uh, yeah, there we go, so same password. It's difficult to talk and uh, and do this on the Azure portal. 
Um, we want to select uh, the free tier. Don't want to pay any money for this again, so we'll select that. Um, need to select the. Should it do? That? Oh, yeah. Just need to come in here and just confirm that this is our settings. Boom. Job done. Now it's going to create the data connection. So what this is doing is this is spinning up a new instance of SQL Server and then getting our connection made between our orchestrator, so our middleware app service app, and that database. So we'll give it a moment to do that. This is normally significantly quicker than deploying it on-premise. Uh, I normally ask the audience, how, what's the quickest time you've ever deployed a new instance of SQL uh, on-premise? And I think the quickest was one week. As you can see, we're maybe 30 seconds in, we're 10% complete. So it's a, a little bit quicker than a week, but it's uh, in terms of demos, a little bit boring. So let's skip ahead. And boom, there we go. The data connection has been created. Um, so just like before, when we created a new resource, we'll probably want to go back into the resource group and hit refresh in order to see that reappear. There we go. We've got the new uh, SQL server and the SQL database. So our connection has been created. So this allows us to now come into easy tables and we can start adding some tables. Uh, but first things first, we do need to just very quickly configure this. Now it's worth noting that if you do this and you've already got a backend deployed, it will wipe it. If you've got an ASP.NET app up in app service and you select easy tables, this is going to nuke your instance and start again. But given this is a file new, we can just go ahead and initialize the app and it's going to set up that Node.js uh, backend for us. So again, it's going to take a little while, probably about 30 seconds, uh, and then we're good to go uh, to start creating these tables. So now we've got two options to create tables. We can create a table manually, or we can upload from CSV, but let's kick off with a manual table, so we need to give it a name. Let's move that to the middle, and we'll call it... Uh, actually, uh, yeah, let's, let's do it like this. My sample table. We'll go OK, and now we can add, once we refresh this, there we go, we can add some items, so some columns. Manage the schema. Um, so we're going to add a number, and we're going to call this user count. Oh, um, we'll keep it again the same as default. There we go, so user count. And you can get an idea of how you can very quickly create your schema. And again, this is all backed by SQL Azure. But in my case, I actually want to upload a spreadsheet. And oh, I don't have the file on my desktop. So let's go ahead and open up Excel. And let's go ahead and export that. Awesome. So that's exported. Let's go ahead and upload that back into Azure. And you can see that it's pretty much got everything correct apart from a few bits here so that is true needs to become a, a bull uh, and now that we set that we can upload this and it's going to create the table columns for us this is pretty nice in fact I think that's actually done it for us already I think we're good to go now let's have a, let's have a quick look headlines Oh, yeah, there we go. It's, uh, it's already got the data in. It was much quicker than I expected. So we now have a full uh, app service instance ready for us to use within our mobile apps with some data that I've uploaded from the spreadsheet. So let's grab this URL, and we're going to load up a little app called Postman. And this is a cross-platform app. I think there's a Chrome extension if you're running on Windows. And this is going to allow us to just uh, do a GET request on the back end. Um, in order to just test if we can pull down that list of headlines. So I'll pass in our URL, and we'll say forward slash tables, forward slash headline. Now, pretty confident it's going to be headline, but it could also be headlines. I can't remember what I named the Excel spreadsheet. On my real API, it's 100% headline, but let's hit send and see what we get. Yeah, there we go. So I think this probably means that we need to go and look for headlines rather than headline, but let's just double check that. Uh, so we'll go and have a look at the tables again. It's always fun to debug. No video is ever perfect. Yeah, look at that. I'm being an idiot. Headlines. We need to just call headlines. So now that I've done that, we can hit go. There we all of the headlines that we have within that spreadsheet. 
uploaded, available to use on the mobile. That's a wrap on easy tables within app service. It's really, really easy to get started with. I highly recommend you give this a go. If you want to have a look at the client side, have a look at Bait News. There are videos in the channel somewhere, click around. So please do hit the subscribe button. It encourages me to make more videos. Do comment if you want to see any particular videos or technologies we talked about. The set of videos I'm working on at the moment include uh, mostly crash and analytics reporting and Azure, but I've also got a little bit of iOS best practices in there as well. But if you wanna see anything else, as I say, comment, get interactive, start poking me, uh, start tweeting at me, mikecodes.net, uh, and I'll try my best to, uh, to get some content out that you wanna see. So thanks very much, and I'll see you on the next one.